Hi, it's Ant and welcome back to Honest Reviews of Bus Stations. And today we've got something a little bit different. We've got an interchange, and that's right. We're here in the B network to look at Rochdale Interchange. Hey, that's a mouthful and a half, that isn't it? And we're looking at the newest, one of the newest interchanges in the B network family. This uh, bus station interchange opened in 2013 and features 13 bays. Some of the bays are drive on, drive off. The other of the bays are uh, just pull up to the side and let the doors open. Now, the bays aren't numbered at Rochdale, and I think this is kind of a B network thing or Greater Manchester thing. They're actually letters, uh, and they're spread around the entire of the station, apart from at the bottom where you get the little coffee uh, cafe off place. The station itself has a information stand, as you can just sit there, and around the station there are a number of notices uh, giving information out. Sadly, no announcements at this station. I was very disappointed about that. But what I am happy to see and I am proud of is the fact that every door does not open unless there is a bus on there. There are one or two that were broken on visiting, but Rochdale have fixed that, which is great for customer safety. Uh, as you can see, just at the bottom here, uh, there is a ticket information to the right of us and a little cafe. Uh, I went in the cafe at uh, the winter time and I must admit, wow, it is a nice cafe, but it is cold. If you come to Rochdale Interchange in the winter, wrap up. There is no roof on this coffee, uh, coffee shop and it is freezing, but the people that run it are wonderful and they were so friendly. Um, I'd broken down here and um, needed rescuing by maintenance um, and they made me a cup of coffee and some water for my porridge. Uh, around the station, you'll notice as well, plenty of information and metal seating with metal bins um, there's no two ways to put it they have to be metal due to the fact that there's such a lot of anti-social behavior at this interchange hence why i am visiting in the morning and not late on the day where it is a little bit quieter and this was due to we tried to film it earlier in the day uh, later in the day should i say later uh, a couple of weeks ago but there was that many people just not happy with me walking around with a small camera and it was causing more trouble than it was worth. The station itself obviously is quite new, but isn't, well, I don't know if it's well looked after or it's just having a little few hiccups. As you can see, those little red bags there are elephant tusks. I believe that's what we call them in retail anyway. Uh, it suffers when it rains with a lot of leaks. Um, so it's cold in the winter and in, uh, and in the summer months, when it rains it leaks and there are quite a few leaks and little spots around the bus station you have to be careful that you don't like run into when it's wet but overall the self the station is mediocrely well kept um there's not a lot of litter however i must say a couple of times when i have visited and we were recording we stopped recording there was a lot of homeless people on the station and a lot of them sleeping by the doors at the top oh, of here good morning. and at the bottom uh, using the free metro paper. Now I understand homelessness is a big problem in the UK and a big problem in like Greater Manchester. However, if we look at this as somebody visiting the station for the first time and getting off a bus and wanting to wait for another bus or a coach connection or a interchange service, this might be quite scary. Now, saying that, in the last couple of times I have visited Rochdale Interchange, they have improved on their security team. The B Network have rolled out a new security team who are usually on the station for quite a while. Obviously, when I visited this time, it was like 5 o'clock in the morning, and they weren't around. There were no station staff around. Um, it, it's just... It's, that's the bit that for me that really makes this station not that pleasant to be at. I mean, it has a Morrison's as a cafe, uh, it has customer service, it has information, digital screens, uh, half decent toilets, but the antisocial behaviour, the homelessness that is present in the station, it's hard to give it a score higher than I'd want to put it up there, like in in the in the, the eights or the, the sevens. But for these reasons, I, I, I just can't put it up there. It's 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 been a hard one to decide this because every time I've visited it at different times of the day, I've had different experiences, and I feel like a lot of people will agree with this one. It all depends on the time of day you visit, of what you get in Rochdale Interchange. So this morning when I visited it, it was fine. You know there was 
not a lot of people on the station the station was roughly clean obviously facilities weren't open so if you were waiting like two hours and you needed the bathroom you were out of luck um but obviously that's just part of being in a metropolitan um the metro is literally a short stroll outside of the doors and at the bottom of the station as you'll see in a section second i don't know why i didn't climb up here and have a look at it properly but i don't know if you go on the station if you don't have a ticket you might get in trouble i'm not too sure there's a lot of um a lot of literature around the stations about um, fare evasion, but they don't seem to do anything about it on buses. But maybe trams are a bit more prevalent to it. So yeah, it's a great building and it's a great design and a really good location. I just feel personally like the infrastructure itself for safety during the day, like this station's open from, I think it's open 24 seven. Um, because it always seems to be unlocked when I when we come in, um, and I'm there at 25 past five some mornings, uh, one of the first buses out to Rochdale uh, from Accrington. I just find that the the, the um, there's not a lot of security around in the mornings, and I know that they obviously have have improved with the B network with the new security teams, and my hat goes off to them. I just feel like they need to be a bit more prevalently seen in the mornings. Uh, so for that matter, I think I'm going to give this one a, I'm going to give it a 7, 6.9, it's going to be a 6.9 because I think personal safety has to be taken quite high high up there and apart from its leaks, it's very, it's, there is a lot of leaks and a lot of problems when it rains, um, as you'll probably see here, it's just leaking from there and there's a big puddle. And there are just puddles everywhere inside the station uh, on some days when it's raining. So, yeah, 6.9. I, I want to say yeah, 6.9 for the, for the simple fact that it's, it's customer safety. Um, and if you're on the station early, there is no, there's no staff around. Uh, and I think that could just be a slight improvement from maybe, you know, it's not asking too much to maybe have a station guard or uh, security around just to make sure there's no trouble in the interchange. But yeah, this has been the review, the honest review of Rochdale Interchange. I hope you've enjoyed it and liked the video. If you would like me to visit one of your stations or you would like me to go somewhere where you think I'd find a real lovely station, please leave it in the comments below and I might visit your station next. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.